everybody. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new unit called the radian. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that you're familiar with the old unit, which would be the degree. So when you've drawn angles and measured them, and we've given you problems and, and labeled what those angles are measured, we've always used the degree symbol. So here we are. We have an angle. Notice my angle right now is being measured. If I drag this along, it's going to change. See, a semicircle has a angle of 180 degrees. And I got it as close as I could. It's kind of hard with this with this tool. But on Geometry Sketchpad, if I go beyond that angle, it starts counting down. Right? And that's because it's measuring this angle right here, um, otherwise known as the reference angle. Think about this. If a circle was made to have 360 degrees, there must have been a reason. And I'm not to be to to be completely honest, I'm not necessarily sure of that reason. I do have some hypotheses, but really when you're talking about a, a circle and the angles inside of a circle, it's not really a natural decision to make. So again, that 360 was kind of arbitrarily decided. So that would mean that one degree, I'm going to try to get as close to one degree as possible. It's very hard to do. Okay, that's pretty close. So this tiny little angle is just the result of deciding that there would be 360 of these things in a circle. Right? Somebody could have said, oh, I want 200 degrees to be in a circle, and then a degree would look very different. But in the end, we would know that there are 200 of them inside of a circle. But that wasn't the case. So what would be a more natural um, decision to use for a standard measurement of an angle? Well, when we're talking about circles and angles, a circle is really defined by its radius. So let's take a look at another way of thinking about angles. So here we have a circle, and we're going to call it radius r. So notice it just got drawn. We know its radius is r. Let's take that radius, let's uh, move it over here, and let's pretend that it's a piece of string, and we're going to fit it to fit right on that circle there. So, now that radius and that arc have the same length. We're going to call that angle 1 radian. So now this is a much more natural definition of what an angle is measured by. right? Its, its radius is going to be connected to the actual measure of the angle. So now the next question is, how many of these radians will fit inside of a circle? Well, let's go one more radius length. So now we have two radians, and now we have three radians. How did I wind up with pi radians? Well, if it is pi radians, then we know that the whole circle is two pi radians. Let's investigate this a little more. All right, so think about what we're saying. A radian is the angle that you would draw such that this angle creates an arc with the same length as this radius. So we're talking about this entire arc, which in other words is the circumference. What do you know about the circumference of a circle? Well, I know one thing, and that's the formula for the circumference which is 2 pi r. Let's break that down and think about what that says. r stands for radius. I'm going to put radii. That's the plural of a radius. This number in front is the coefficient. Usually that says how many of this thing that you have. Well, that means you have 2 pi radii that fit around the entire circumference. So that's exactly why there are 2 pi radians in a circle. All right, so now that we know that 2 pi radians is really the same thing as 360 degrees, 
or it makes sense now that pi radians is really 180 degrees, right? So let's think about what we would do with other angles, like 135, for example. What is 135 degrees in radians? Well, my instinct would be to make a proportion. We know that pi is to 180 as what is to 135. Right? And we know that there's four different ways to set up a proportion, so as long as you are consistent. Um, I like to do my, my radians on this side and my degrees on this side, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to solve for x, so I get 135 pi equals 180 divide, whoops, 180x divide by 180. And now I'm going to simplify 135 and 180. So what number goes into both of those? I think 45 goes into both of those. So 135 divided by 45 is 3. And 180 divided by 45 is 4. So 135 degrees is the same thing as 3 pi over 4 radians. Now it's also good to note that the unit of radians it actually doesn't have to uh, be written right after that number. Radians is actually a pure number and if I were to just write 3 pi over 4 I and I'm talking about angles, I would assume that it's uh, in radians. This time Let's go from radians, notice I didn't write radians, let's go from radians into degrees. So we could obviously set up a proportion, we would solve for x, great, we have it in degrees. I also wanted to show you a little shortcut that I like to use. We know that pi is 180 degrees. So this is really saying two-thirds of pi. So. What is two-thirds of 180? Well, that's much easier to think of as 180 over 3, which is 60. So this becomes 2 times 60, which is 120 degrees. So when you're working with radians, there's a few angles that are going to come up a lot. Pi over 3 is the first one, which is what we just worked with, if you see it right here. That's really saying 60 degrees. Pi over 2 comes up a lot, so that's 180 cut in half, 90 degrees. And pi over 6, which is 180 divided by 6, which is 30 degrees. So a lot of times we like to, to see this, this hidden um, either 60, 30, 90, something like that in the, uh, the thing that we're looking at. So I just wanted to go back to the first example that we did. Now that we talked about the angles that we're going to know a lot, and think about 135 and its reference angle. So in standard position, 135 is in quadrant 2. And its reference angle right here would be 45. So I sometimes like to think of 135 as this 90 degree angle plus whatever this remaining piece here is, which is 45 degrees. So we have a 90 degree angle, which is pi over 2, and an extra 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. So if you want to add those up, you can do that. Or another way of doing that would be to think about breaking this into fourths. So there'd be a 45 here, a 45 here, and we already have these two 45s. I also like to count up how many 45 degree angles it takes to get to the 135 degree position, which would be 3. So I have 3 pi over 4s, which is where we get the 3 pi over 4 from. right? And I like doing that better than adding these fractions. I have to you know, make a common denominator. So just another trick I thought I'd throw at you.